At Cute Circuit, we're designing the future of fashion. We use microelectronics and smart textiles and combine this with cutting edge fashion to try and create garments that do something magical. And we've been doing this for quite some time. We started Cute Circuit over 10 years ago now. So we've been designing wearable technology for over a decade. And if you think back 10 years, I mean, today, people talk about wearable technology. It's one of the hot topics of 2014. It's in the news all the time. So uh, raise of hands, who's heard of wearable technology? I bet everybody in the room. Yes. But think back 10 years ago. Nobody had a clue what we were talking about when we said we're designing fashion with wearable technology inside. We would say it's a br we're a brand of fashion that has clothing with, with new materials, and they do unusual things. And they thought, but I've never heard of anything like that. Surely there's no market for things like this. And we said, no, this is going to be really exciting. It's a big thing. It's coming in the future. And, but we kept at it, and we kept designing these things. And one of the very first things that we designed was that really caught people's attention was something called the hug shirt. Um, basically, the hug shirt was the first touch telecommunication device. So imagine you're here in London, and your best friend is in Tokyo, and you want to send her a hug. You put on the hug shirt, you give yourself a squeeze, and sensors in the fabric capture where you're touching how strong and for how long. And all this data goes via Bluetooth into your cell phone and is transformed into a hug message. And when your friend back on the other side of the world is receiving this message, he says, there is a hug for you, you want to feel it. And she said, yes, of course. She's wearing the hug shirt 24 seven. And her shirt is gonna get warm and vibrate in the same area that you touched on your shirt. So it's really like if you give yourself a pat on the shoulder, say, well done today. And then she's gonna feel this. So it's really like trying to create a way for people to communicate where you don't just send a text message or make a phone call, but you have a physical interaction over distance. And that for us was very interesting because we had to develop all the sensors because sensors didn't exist. And the other big problem the problem that we had is that materials to make garments comfortable didn't exist. So some engineers were like, well, you have to use wires. And we're like, no, wires in a garment. People are not going to be able to wash it. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be horrible. So we spent a huge amount of years developing new materials, creating little conductive ribbons that are really soft, creating our own textile and smart fabric sensors that are coated with silver or gold so that we could make all these garments that you'll see now possible, but also really wearable and very comfortable at the same time. Oh, and this is something that I'm wearing right now. And uh, it was one of our first designs. And it basically was motion reactive. So I don't know if you can dim the lights a little bit. So you see, if I'm perfectly still, my top doesn't do anything. But if I start moving, it starts to light up. And the more I move, <laughs> the more it lights up. So if you go running in the evening, then it sort of captures your motion and it keeps going. But then as soon as you slow down, very slowly, it's going to start to rest as well. So it calibrates on you when you wear it. And then when you start moving, it keeps doing its wonderful things. And one thing that we had to do with this garment is that we had to find a way to go from something that is really like blue sky to something that is something that you can wear every day. And one of the big problems with wearable technology was, how do you wash it? And so we spent two years doing wash tests on this garment. And every time we washed it, it kept breaking until we found a way to build it that was solid enough and durable enough that you could actually drop this garment in the washing machine, wash it at 30 degrees with your usual soap and conditioner, and then just hang it to dry. You can wear it, and it's still going to work the day after. So it was just like a very long process. <laughs> Boring at times. Very exciting at others. <laughs> so. And um, I like, you know, things that light up. I love living in the future. I feel like when Blade Runner predicted the future, I'm living in it now. <laughs> Go ahead. So uh, in the very early days when we started designing things, the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago gave us the opportunity. They said, what do you think the most spectacular thing you could design about the future would be? What, are, what will our clothes look like in 10 to 15 years? And so we designed something called the Galaxy Dress, which today is the world's largest wearable LED display. And uh, Katie's stylist happened to see that dress in the museum. And he said, we want Katie to wear it to the, to the Met Ball. And we said, well, when is the Met Ball? And he said, it's, it's next Monday. <laughs> it was a Thursday evening. And this was a Thursday evening. And we said, well, we can't get the dress out of the museum. And he's like, well, can't you make another one? And we said, probably not in five days. And he's like, please try. Katie's crying. She really wants a light up dress. <laughs> And so we said, okay, we'll try, Johnny. And so we made the dress, stayed up 
without sleep for about three days, and we flew to New York and gave her the dress, and she was fantastic. The next morning after uh, she gave this interview, she was on the cover of Women's Wear Daily. It, it, it went everywhere. And all of a sudden, people all over the world were wanting to wear light-up dresses like, like Katie's. And so we made one, and it's called the K dress. And basically, it's like similar to Katie's dress with like little pleats. But the thing that we tried to do with this one is that actually we had to do something that was on the red carpet and make it again manufacturable. And so we had to sort of merge something that is really traditional, like silk and pleating, with something that, of course, is high tech, like garments that can change color and light up. And so we found these amazing artisans in. Uh, yeah, just outside London, and uh, they spent like a long time with us, and uh, they found a way to pleat all this silk in a way that is traditional, like they used to do 100 years ago, but then we were able to merge it as well with our technology. So I think it was an interesting experiment to see, okay, we try to innovate, we are trying to do something that didn't exist, but then at the same time we respect the tradition and the craftsmanship, and we try to put it together. It's adorable. I absolutely love this dress, regardless of the fact that you could, it has live tweets on it. It's one of the best dresses I've ever seen her wear. It's cut nice on her, it's not showing too much skin, but it is showing skin in the right places. Her hair and her makeup looks beautiful. It's amazing, like, it, and I think it's a start of a new trend. I am absolutely obsessed with this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So what you just saw is a, is a clip from Fashion Police. You probably know Fashion Police, where they are, trash everybody's outfit <laughs> on the red carpet. But in this case, they loved our dress. And this is the world's first couture Twitter dress. It was le reading, it was getting tweets in real time from the internet and displaying it on Nicole Scherzinger's dress as she's arriving on the red carpet at this event. And um, so in this way, they were able to have her fans and people want, sort of participate in the event while, in real time while she's arriving. And I think that the thing that was really interesting is that like sometimes people just want to say really naughty things, and so we just had to send a tweet out saying, just say nice things, otherwise you're, nobody's going to read it. And then all of a sudden all these lovely tweets started coming in, and of course they were all being displayed. So I think it's interesting how like, once you have the power to be on somebody's dress, like you have the power to advertise who you are on somebody else's surface, then the interesting thing can happen. And the thing that... Uh, we try to do with this is that we created a whole fashion collection that could be actually interactive and not only to it, but also change color while being controlled from your iPhone with a spe special app. And I'm wearing this. So the photo that you're looking at right now is a photo that was just taken about a week ago at our 10-year commemorative uh, retrospective fashion show in Rome. It was at the Maker Fair <laughs> Rome. And the jacket that she's wearing is the same one you see there. She's controlling it with the Q app from Cute Circuit, which is an app that's designed specifically to control your interactive garments. Yeah, and if I actually had turned my Twitter feed on, you could actually see tweets scrolling here. So if later on you want to tweet, I'm just going to turn it on, and then you can tweet and read whatever messages you want. But I think the thing that we Here's thought some it other was. Patterns too. Ah, oh, yes. Sorry, sorry. What you got? <laughs> Dots. And then what we have. Oh, hearts. Hearts is one of my favorites. So the thing that we tried to do is that we had the first fashion show where all the models were able to control the color of their garments while they were on the catwalk. So we are, to, we are the designers, but for once we decided to step back and see what people would do while wearing our garments. In the, in a contest such as that of the catwalk, where usually there is like this mandatory, this has to be done like this and this has to look like this, where the designer always decides and the people are never able to interact with it. So we really wanted to go for it, and it was a really, really fun show. And I think we have a video, okay. hopefully. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, there is also the handbag. I'll show it to you in a second. But I want to show you the video. Where is it? Yes. So this is a, a video. This isn't the, vi the show in Rome. This is the uh, show that we did at New York Fashion Week. Did you want to play the video? Yeah.
So our message is persevere, because when we first started, everybody told us to stop, and we just kept going. And finally, we were able to bring something from an idea to market. So just keep persevering and try your best to make things happen. Thank you. That's the fish is Pretty winning. amazing stuff, Thank guys. Thank you. Um, so yesterday, Will I Am came on stage and he showed, you know, he showed his wearable cuff that he's about to launch, and he was talking about a future where our kind of our jackets will contain batteries that will charge our phones, and you guys are doing interesting things. So, so what do you think that the future? You know, do you think in ten years' time that all our clothes are going to be able to do this? What what kind of things are you imagining that we're going to be able to do in ten years' time? Yeah, usually like our idea is that like vision for the future is that. All the things that we carry with us today, like their boxes, mobile phones, cameras, they're all going to disappear and they're all going to be in our garments. So we already have garments that make phone calls or garments that take photos. And, uh, and I think something is, everything is becoming so small and it's like really on a micro scale uh, or a nano scale. And once this is in your garment, then it becomes almost indestructible because it's so small, you, even if you step on it, you cannot break it. So I think really the, the future is gonna be more about like things that happen in your garment. So it doesn't have to be super visual, like what I'm wearing. Uh, you can just have sensors and allow you to interact. But I think it's a more natural interaction because still we are not gonna be able to go around naked. So if you have to wear something, at least you wear something that has an interesting function and allows you to connect to people. I think we can all agree that the future looks awesome. Thank you very much. Keep Thank circuit. You.